Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Government Relations Committee for Thursday, January 14th, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable as well as when requesting discussion on any agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Present. Ms. Scott. Ms. Rowe. Present. Ms. Hen. Present. Thank you. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Baysmore. Uh, present. Mr. Korn. Present. Ms. Rosenberg, are there any other members participating on the call that you have not named? No, there are not. Thank you. Again, good afternoon. Welcome committee members. We're going to move right through. You know, we keep as tight a schedule as we possibly can while we're getting all of this good information. Uh, and so I'm going to turn it over now to Mr. Baysmore for legislative process COVID-19. Mr. Baysmore. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, Ms. Pastor, and thank you to all the uh, school board members who are on uh, Vice Chair Julie Hen and, and Lily Rowe. I'm looking forward to working with you this legislative session. Uh, and as you know, it's, it's going to be um, due to COVID-19 and the safety precautions that the state legislature uh, put in place this year, everything is going to be different. And uh, so the, the the word that I'm asking and the word I'm using for, for everyone this legislative session is, is patience uh, because it's all new uh, what they're doing down there. They're getting used to it. Uh, the legislature opened yesterday, uh, Wednesday, and there were some technical difficulties yesterday and today as everybody's getting used to the to the Zoom process and, and, and all of that, but um, um, th they will be able to conduct business. They were able to uh, make sure that they could have all of their hearings virtually. Uh, there are some things in the legislature this year that they have to, that's statutory, where they actually have to physically be in the state house and vote. And so you will have uh, members come together during the session uh, for key votes and, and key business that statutorily they have to be physically in the building to do. Um, they have set up um, all types of safety protocols 
uh, with petitions, plastic petitions, um, six feet uh, social distancing, uh, mask wearing. Uh, they really have went above and beyond to make sure that all of the state legislatures and their staff are safe who are in who, are, who have to be in the building during the session. Um, because of the recent events in at the Capitol um, um, in that situation, they have also increased um, security in the state house. And so uh, they haven't received um, any direct uh, president. Bill Ferguson said they haven't received any direct threats, but because of the climate in the country right now, um, security is 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 pretty heavy down there right now. Um, they're encouraging people not to visit the state house. Um, they are encouraging people to um, use the telephone if you want to speak to a legislature or email if you want to speak to a legislature. If um, you want to testify, they have set up electronic means where if there's a bill that any of the board members uh, want to come down, not we're well, not go down physically, but want to testify, you can do it uh, by by signing up. They'll send you a link, and then they'll they'll call on you um, through their virtual, so that so that the public uh, can still have a voice in, in these hearings. Um, they're encouraging people to actually write in um, their testimony. Um, they say that's a lot more efficient for them and a lot easier to manage. Um, and so a lot of people will be doing that. There's a mechanism to um, send your written support or oppose of legislation that's taking place as well. Um, so I can work with anyone on that, the school board. If if there are certain um, issues that you want to weigh in on uh, through their Zoom efforts or, or by written testimony, I will say that they um, are going to be strict about the timeline in signing up to testify and getting written testimony in. Um, it's going to open up 48 hours before the actual, actual hearing date, and then there's going to be a window of time where everyone has to get in in that window and, and, and register. So we want to make sure that if, if we are going to send in letters or if we are going to testify that we make sure that we are in that 48 hour window. Um, so the communication internally between us, you know, just want to you know, make the extra calls to make sure that we we are on um, point with the timelines. Um, they they are restricting the number of bills that legislators can write. They are very conscious of the safety hazard and bringing everyone in. I think if it wasn't statutorily, um, if they weren't statutorily obligated, that they would have actually not had the legislators come in um, physically. Um, but there was no way around that. Um, the uh, um, they had their um, vote yesterday for the president of the Senate and the Speaker of the House. President Bill Ferguson was um, voted as the president of the Senate again. And and for us, um, our, our delegate, uh, Delegate Adrian Jones uh, here in Baltimore County uh, was voted uh, both of them unanimously and she's going to be the Speaker of the House. So that's a that's a big deal for us to have a Speaker of the House from Baltimore County. Um, there's some local bills that will be coming forth that I want to try to keep an eye on and keep keep the uh, legislative committee aware of. And basically how the work is I'll get the you know the local bills um, that that pertain to us to 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 share and she'll get them to the to, to the school board and then you can decide whether or not you want to support or oppose uh, write a letter or testify on those particular bills. Um, so that's kind of the 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 internal internal process. Um, there's one bill right now that's been um, posted is uh, by um, uh, Senator Charles Sidnor and uh, Delegate Eric Ebersol. It's it's a bill that they had in last year that they're reintroducing, um, and it's directly um, impacts the school board. And so um, that that bill is HB 181, Senate Bill 150. And it pertains to the election of board officers, the election of board officers, the chair and the vice chair. What they're proposing in their legislation is that there's a majority vote of the of the sitting members that can elect the chair and the vice chair and not and not the um, I, I believe it was determined last year that it had to be uh, seven votes. Um, and so they're reintroducing that to have a majority vote. So that I know that's definitely something that the the uh, school board wants to uh, keep your eye on and maybe and weigh in on, 
again, and again, that's HB 181 and Senate Bill 150. And so um, bills like that, we know that the county executive, and I believe um, has put out his legislative agenda. He's going to look to put in legislation that expands the um, um, duties and over, oversight of the uh, county's inspector general to be able to um, look at um, waste, fraud, and abuse in the school system. So that lets, that's a local school bill that affects us directly. So I'll, when that when that bill is written and, and some others, I will um, make sure that we get that. It gets in front of you as, as, as the school board members so that you can weigh in on those. Um, they're, they're, they're gonna, there always are a lot of um, education bills that come in the legislature. Um, there was an unprecedented amount of pre-filed bills this year because I think everybody was thinking that this legislature may not go 90 days. Um, they may get in and do their work and, 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 and do the big, big things and then adjourn. So I think a lot of legislatures just said, well, if it's going to be a shortened session because, you know, nobody, no one knows, I think they were trying to get a lot of bills in early and, and, and they call those pre, pre-filed bills. And, and so um, we, what we do as a local um, board is we attend Mabe's legislative session with John Willems and other um, jurisdictions from around the state. And 99.9% and .9 of the time, because Mabe you know, represents all the school boards, um, they have a, they have opinions and, and, and on, on a majority of the bills and 99.9% .9 of the times we are lined up with them. They do a great job in representing the local um, um, school boards and Cheryl Pasteur is um, on that on that committee. So we'll keep, keep a close eye on that. Um, but there are those other bills sometimes that may may agree may agree with and we may not or, or vice versa. But that's that's always a small number. Uh, we usually are pretty much lined up with them. They do a great job of rep you know, just representing um, the local school boards and, and you know, pretty much understand what what, what your priorities are. And uh, uh, Ms. Pasteur and I, we attend those meetings and we'll be bringing back reports. The other thing is, is Ms. Eileen Ro Rosenberg will be sending um, all of the bills. We may have about 200 or so, um, I think, um, but um, she'll get those to you. Um, to Tracy, who will post them on board docs, and so we'll be aware of all the bills um, um, that that come up. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I think you know. As I said, I'll, I'll finish with um, the word patience um, with this legislature um, because they're all it's all new to them, and they're really trying to make sure um, they can get through and keep every everyone safe. Um, and 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 the other thing is is to make sure that we. Um, on those bills that that you that you highlight that you as individuals and as a group um, want to highlight just make sure we get you know I get that and, and this committee gets that so that we can follow those bills and make sure we're getting the information so that internal communication we just going to try to do you know a little better better uh, this year because everything has changed down there and they're still I was on some committee meetings today they're still figuring it out as they go along they don't have all the answers because as they go along, that's they're finding out. Well, this didn't work, so we are gonna have to do it another way, and and um, um, so I just want to make sure that we're on top of top of legislation that's important to us. So that that that's my update. If there's any questions or or, or comments? Thank you, Thank you. Mr. Basemore. Mm -hmm. um, it will be different. Uh, yes. Any questions or comments for Mr. Basemore? All right, thank you. Ms. Rosenberg, I believe Ms. Causey and Mr. Mahunza have joined us. Uh, Ms. Pasteur, I do have one question for Mr. Baysmore, if I may. Sure. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Ms. Ham. Um, Mr. Baysmore, do you know if they are using um, the normal systems to track bills this session and whether or not the automated notifications as bills move through? the process are working? Yes, ma'am. Excellent question, uh, uh, Madam Vice Chair. Um, they're using um, my MGA. If you go to the legislative website, um, they started this last year and, and you know, we're starting anything new. It had some snafus in it, but um, you can go to my MGA 
um, set up your own account and, and, and put in the bills that you are particularly interested in, and they'll keep a track of those for you through the session. So that's a valuable tool. And I, and I actually meant I to mention that, so if, using that last year. So I, right. I was hoping that would be the answer, but yeah. Thank yeah, thank you for asking because I, I actually meant to say that in my in my opening statement uh, because that's what I use. I actually use my MGA. It's an amazing tool. So yeah. good yeah. news. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Now, I see a uh, thank you um, for the question, Ms. Hen, and thank you, uh, Mr. Baysmore. I see two phone numbers. I'm just going under the assumption one is Ms. Mrs. Causey and one is Mr. Mahunza. How do I know? I'm probably yes, I'm one of them. I'm the two one one one. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. I'm that's Miss Rowe, right? All right, Mr. Yeah. Mahomes, are you on? Yes, I am. Oh, oh great. Uh, Miss Causey. Okay, she texted that she had the information, so uh, I'm thinking she'll get on shortly. All right, I'm just going to now follow up on Mr. Baysmore's um, overview, uh, a general overview of General Assembly, and just do some highlights uh, from the last MABE meeting uh, so you'll get a sense of some of the bills coming forward that have to do with education uh, and where MABE stands on them. So I'll start with uh, House Bill 237, which is um, pertaining to child abuse. MABE is supporting it. Uh, House Bill 405, special education, judicial actions. MABE is not supporting that, and they're not supporting it because there was a, um, a parallel um, bill that went through last year, and this one um, seeks to put back some of the things uh, that were taken out last year. So that's a piece of their thinking. House Bill 165, Maryland Ho Health Working Families Act, maybe is supporting that. Uh, 370, Seizure Action Plans, how to educate and implement um, for, uh, for and when students uh, do have seizures. Uh, MABE is not supporting it um, because there are some things that still need to be worked out uh, with that in, in terms of health protocols. Uh, 243, Public Health, Gambling and Addiction Curriculum. And Mr. Baysmore, I must have been having an out of body moment at that time because I didn't write down whether they were supporting it or not. But I'm going, if you don't have that, I'm going to look that up, um, folks, so that I can tell you. Somehow in my head, I believe that they were not supporting it. But I, I don't have no. What's, fear what's the number, Ms. Pastor? It's 243. HB? Yes. HB 243. While they are looking at that, um, 126, the State Department Early Literacy and Dyslexia Practices includes all mm -hmm. parts that uh, were extracted from a new bill, just as one I mentioned earlier, that passed the year before. So that's still being um, examined uh, by MABE folks. Um, FASA and MSFAA, which is the state version of that, uh, they, that's number 96, and they are supporting it with amendments. The School Disciplinary Data Collection 171, they are supporting that as well with amendments. 342, Health and Safety of Students Notification of Problematic sex, Sexual Behavior, they are not supporting it and not supporting it because 
it is primarily looking at our younger students and there's nothing right now that is in it that would um, keep us from prejudging and judging little people who just are not old enough to know some things. So uh, this is being worked out. We're not talking about older. So know that that's why um, in terms of it, uh, they are maybe is, is looking at how the uh, glitches in that one are being worked out. Uh, 192 special education classrooms use of video recording devices um, may, both Mabe and Pazam are not supporting it um, because there's still a lot of concern with parents about um, uh, having their children videotaped even though we do understand that on another level for the health and welfare and the education of students, it has merits. But again, um, there's some discussion about that as well. Uh, we were visited by Senator Pinsky, who uh, was really uh, very kind with his time and his willingness to answer questions of all sorts. Uh, and he talked about a number of things, uh, anything that any of us had on our minds. Uh, one of the things that did pique my interest, of course, along with his discussion of Kerwin and uh, Built to Learn, is that September 30th enrollment, you know, that has been um, a point of contention because we know that the bulk of the children, or not the bulk, but a large number of children who come into our system or all systems throughout the state come after September 30th. Um, and so there's always that conversation about whether we continue to use September 30th or if we go to the end of October understanding very clearly and I'm going to just share as the schoolhouse person no matter what folks tell you when they say we adjust staffing we adjust um, things after September 30th the reality is that in terms of the funding that goes into schools um, as well as staffing will never match up to the needs of that school once that September 30th enrollment happens because Ms. things Hester. are predicated on that. So I'm going to stop there. Do you have any questions for me or for Mr. Baysmore about anything I just said? Ms. Texas, this is Lily Rowe. I have a question. Yes. Can you um, tell me, so that September 30th, is that a bill already that's been proposed? And what are they proposing as a start date? No, September. 30th, um, he was just actually talking about September 30th because that the, uh, Senator Pinsky was answering our questions. Um, September 30th is, um, has been and it is now our uh, date, our state date for looking at enrollment, but there's always a lot of conversation, even when we were doing funding, uh, the Kerwin funding, that was at the center of it. Do we use the September 30th or do we wait until the end of October, uh, which comes closer to being a real number? So there's no there's no push right now about changing it. It's it's always a topic of conversation. I see. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Um, Mr. Baysmore, you want to add anything to what I gave? No, ma'am, that was that was excellent, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank um, you. I am remiss. I, I asked about the people who came in um, after we started, but I do want to welcome Vice Chair um, Julie Hen, 
who is on this committee and she was unable to attend our last one. So welcome to uh, legislative and governmental affairs. We're rather fabulous, small but fabulous. So <laughs> Thank welcome. You, Chair. All right, let's see. Let me try to switch back here. So, um, Mr. Bazemore, anything that you want to add about Kerwin and Built to Learn? You're actually next on the agenda with that. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Um, OK, that is next on the agenda. Um, Kerwin, as you know, in the Built to Learn Act for Baltimore County is, is kind of our bread and butter. And uh, it's been our main priority uh, on this legislative committee on um, the last two years. Um, Built to Learn Act directly impacts Baltimore County with our capital um, um, projects and capital programs. Uh, and I know we all know that. I, I do understand that. Um, but what happened is instead, instead of the Built to Learn being a separate bill and, and Kerwin being a separate bill, they coupled the two bills together so that when the Kerwin bill was vetoed by the governor, it automatically um, vetoed the Built to Learn Act because it was coupled with the Kerwin. And, and, and so the Built to Learn Act is, is, is really critical um, um, to our capital programs. And, and, and so there's an there's a effort in the legislature to overturn or you know, override the, the, the Kerwin veto. Um, a lot of people thought that um, when the legislature started yesterday, that that would probably be number one on the agenda, um, but it but it wasn't. Um, it wasn't taken up today either, um, because I think that. But we know that it's a it's a priority for the leg state legislature. But I think because everything is so new down there and, and what they're doing, they're, they're they're just ramping up and getting you know processes and, and things in place. Um, but I will keep a close eye on um, that override vote when it happens. My thinking is that it has to happen sooner than later, because if you override the Kerwin bill, it's a substantial um, funding that goes along with it, about $4 billion um, over 10 years. And so what they will have to do is, is have a companion bill to address the funding of Kerwin. So in order to do all of that, they would have to address that early in the session so that they can uh, uh, make sure those uh, that that companion bill when they override um, is, is brought into play too. Because because they I think they're going to um, shift some of the funding right now. Kerwin is funded, I think, this year and next year, but then um, the outlying years, I think they're going to try to structure it where um, you know we can we can adequately fund it uh, because everything changed um, when COVID hit and, and and you know we had that economic downturn. So so I'll keep a close eye on Kerwin and the Built to Learn and make sure that we um, know when that vote is going to take place. Um, if it if it's overridden, um, what it means to us is is that we can uh, the county executive can immediately go into his capital. Um, funding program because now we have funding from um, of the state to match our funding and we can get back on our construction um, plan that's been kind of sitting idle for the last one to two years because we haven't been able to get funding from you know adequate funding from the state so so for us it's a big deal and it gets us back on track um that's pretty much it uh you know uh, wait and see Thank you. Madam Chair, may I ask a question from Mr. Basemore? Oh, you're on mute, Ms. Pester. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead, Ms. Hand. Thank you. Mr. Basemore, do you know if any bills have been introduced to um, rescind the language that was added to Built to Learn at the last minute? I believe it was in Ways and Means that coupled Built to Learn with Kerwin. Um, to remove that language so that the two could be voted on independently? No, I I, um, I haven't seen anything on that. I'll keep my eyes open. Um, I think that they are pretty confident that it, you know, they have the votes to override. 
Um, I think if, if, if that doesn't happen, I think then they will look at a bill to decouple it and make it a standalone bill. Um, but just talking to the legislatures and reading the temperature down there, uh, you know, in the Senate, in the, um, uh, in the House, um, and, and, and listening to the uh, Senate president, uh, Bill Ferguson and Speaker Jones, uh, they said that this is something that they want to do. And typically, you know, if, if you're president of the Senate and you speak of the House, you know, kind of, you know, says that this is something that they're they're looking looking to do. We're hoping, uh, Mr. Baysmore, I'm going to ask you to please uh, really focus on that um, for us. Um, I have to admit, since I was on the funding committee and we never talked about bringing the two together. Um, and when people asked the question about whether one would take, and that came up on this committee, if one would take away from the other based on the conversations and the work we did in Annapolis, my answer always was no, separate. Um, so I was a little surprised as were others when they were coupled. So I would really appreciate it. And I'm sure the committee would if you keep both ears open for what they're saying. But for right now, I think we can go with uh, what you just said that if the overriding does not happen, then they will do something to decouple. Right. Is that, did I understand that? Yes, that's my that's my understanding. Uh, because and here and here's why, and I can also explain why it was coupled. There was a political kind of maneuver that was done, you know, when they coupled the two bills. But the reason it would be be better if it's overridden, it would mean that the funding is is, is available right away for the for the bill to learn. Um, um, but if you decouple the bill, mm -hmm. then you have to take that bill and then go through the whole process of introducing a bill and going through the hearings. And and so it's it pushes the timeline back. It's doable, but it, 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 we lose more time and we've already lost a year or so. So the hope is, is that or the consensus is, is that um, if they're going to override, if they will, I don't know, but that 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 that's that would help us more because then we would get the funding immediately. Um, if it's overridden and the reason right. they the reason they coupled it, Madam Chair, because okay. a lot of people didn't realize and, and we none of us did. None of us did. None of us saw that. But but the reason it was coupled was at the time the governor was supporting built to learn. You know, and so what 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 folks thought was, OK, the governor supporting built to learn. And we know he's not supporting Kerwin. So if we couple built to learn with Kerwin because he really, you know, he capital funding, he was all in, in on capital funding. Um, they thought that that would maybe um, the governor wouldn't veto Kerwin because the built to learn was coupled with it. But that didn't happen. And so when he vetoed Kerwin, de facto built 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 to learn was was vetoed as well. Well, I, I hope that um, as our, our, our rep um, with our county people, as much as I believe in Kerwin and want that to happen, and this is Cheryl past your speak, okay? As much as I believe in it and want it to happen, I, uh, and, and that was what I thought was the reason that it, they were put together. Um, the sooner we start doing what's necessary for our structures, our buildings, the sooner we can start moving some of the schools out the way because they've been handled and we can start putting others on the list. And by now, everybody is tired of hearing me talk about my one school that's always stays in my mind and in my heart. So we all have that school, but that's just where I stand that we've got to start doing what we need to do um, for our school structures um, and starting that movement. And, and I think it was Miss Rowe who asked 
that we put as part of our legislative priorities, Ms. Rowe, if I'm incorrect, stop me, but someone did, um, that um, we look at separation uh, as one of our priorities. Yes, um, let me just point. I have a follow up for Mr. Basemore. If OK, if hold on. Let me just point out Ms. Causey is on the line. She's on a public something or other, but she is listening in. Go ahead, Ms. Han. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Basemore, would we still have time then if um, that is not overridden for legislation to decouple the two? Because look, this was a gamble our kids can't afford for us to go another year without the capital funding for these projects. As Ms. Pasture said, too much is on the line. Um, and as you said, there, we really need this capital funding. Yeah. We need it to move yeah. forward. Um, there was a gamble. It right. it lost. Um, so we we need this one way or the other. And will we have time, given the uniqueness of this session, for emergency legislation to decouple the two? And is there enough time in the session to get another bill through? Because, like you said, it sounds like it has to go through from step one. Right. Right. I I, I hope in a normal if this was a normal year. Um, Madam Vice Chair, I would say yes, it, it, it's it is it is enough time, but with with this year being as, as it is, um, um, there's so many variables that you can't really say how long they're going to be in there because the other thing too, if somebody if they were saying they did a lot of talking today about if if people, um, you know, contract COVID and they're all together, and members who've been in contact with that member have to go to quarantine then they won't be able to conduct business. And if is there some if there's some type of outburst and, and um, you know, a lot of the, the, the senators and delegates have to be quarantined, then they won't be able to conduct business. So that 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 um, throws all the timelines completely out of whack. So um, what I'm asking I, I wish, do we need, yeah, do we need to act on plan B now. Do we need to have plan B, a bill submitted to decouple these two and remove that language from built to learn? So that in the event this is not overridden, we have a fallback. I and can ask. Uh, I can ask the uh, Pat Young, um, Delegate Pat Young, who is the chair of the um, House delegation for Baltimore County. I can follow up with him and see if that that's something that can be, you know, Plan B can be be ready just in case. Right. Because um, I hate to lose. I, I'd hate to miss that opportunity by thinking it, we're going to have one outcome and having another like we did last time, the last right, few I'm, years. I understand. OK, I'll I'll double back around with uh, Delegate Pat Young and um, get back to the committee. Thank you. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Kesher. Ms. Kesher, can I ask a question? Oh, I'm on mute. I'm sorry. Um, Scott, I see is here. So good afternoon, Ms. Scott. Um, and welcome. Do you have any questions mm -hmm. um, before I turn it to Ms. Um, Rowe, Ms. Scott, about anything that you've heard since you've been on? Because I don't know when you came on. Thank you for that. Oh, I don't I don't have any questions. Thank you, though. All right. Thank you, Ms. Um, Rowe. Thank you, Ms. Pester. Um, Mr. Bazemore, can you clarify for me um, when Built to Learn was coupled to Kerwin? Was it coupled to Kerwin in such a way that it simply wouldn't be funded until and unless Kerwin passes? So I guess my question is, if if the Kerwin veto is overridden, mm -hmm. then the funding kicks in because that Built to Learn bill is valid. But yeah. if the funding um if it's not overridden so then i guess what if we have a bill that's then just not funded so then what would the follow-up bill be to de a bill to decouple or a whole new bill to learn bill and that that's that's what i would have to talk to pat delegate pat young about um to see what what would be the um you know mo the best way to do that either to decouple the bill or write a standalone bill, a whole new piece of legislation 
um, that would have to go through the process. So that's kind of a strategy type question. I would I would need to talk to Delegate Young about that and see, you know, in their in their eyes, in the legislators' eyes, what would be the best strategy for that. Okay, and could you also find out when you do that, what would be the faster process, the decoupling or doing a whole, because I could see negotiating a whole new bill as people try to add whole new things that maybe were in Kerwin, but were not passed or like, I could see a whole thing where it becomes a whole new legislative thing that then may not pass, where since Built to Learn as it sits now did pass the General Assembly, I could see decoupling being far more likely to pass quickly and, and non-controversially than if they write a whole new bill or draft a whole new bill and then people right. want to debate. You know what I mean? So I, I guess I I'd like clarification because as this committee took a position, um, to support Bill to Learn and support the decoupling, it I don't I want our position that we took to be clear that we're not trying to fool around with this and wait another year because our county really can't wait another year. I agree, I agree. So I'll I'll do that. I'll make sure I talk to Delegate Young. Um, we actually have a, have a meeting tomorrow. Hopefully, I can speak to him tomorrow morning. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Thank everyone for your questions. Um, I'm looking at the clock and I'm going to ask um, your patience and indulgence by adding five more minutes because um, to our meeting time because um, Mr. Mahumsa is here and I would like him to be able to extend his voice on behalf of our students. So at this point, I'm going to ask Ms. Hen if she will uh, present uh, what she wants to read to us uh, about something that is very important to this committee, and that is um, the adequate public facilities ordinance. Ms. Han, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. And before I start, what is our time for this? I want to stay within my time limit for this agenda item. You have, based on what we have on schedule, you have. Um, you have about 20 minutes, but I allotted that time just so we would be able to ask you questions. Um, so I'm going to say if, we, if you're finished by and we're finished with that by 455, we'll be on schedule and Mr. Mahumza will still have ample time. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Madam Chair, may, yes. I, may I say something before um, Madam Vice Chair speaks? about the uh, APFO, it'll sure. take 30, 30 seconds. I want to thank her publicly for being on the task force because I was able to go online. They published the meetings online and I was able to uh, listen in on a few of them. And uh, Madam Vice Chair was engaged, um, informed as, as was the other members of the task force and represented very well. I had no idea um, how complicated that that the APFO is and and so just listening listening to their deliberations uh, about this it, it, it's 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 heavy lifting and so I just want to say I had no idea how complicated it was my hats off to the committee members and to you Miss N I think you guys d dove in and did a great job I don't know how you got all that work done in a short period of time but 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 you did so I just wanted to say that publicly thank you thank, thank you. you Mr Basemore thank you uh, Miss Hen and if you look at those minutes, uh, um, it will make you have a headache. So, Ms. Han. Thank you very much. And you'll hear that acronym several times as I um, summarize the work of the task force. Um, it does stand for the Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance, which I'm glad I don't have to repeat more than once because that's a mouthful. Um, the task force was created when the County Council passed Resolution 7620, um, in August of last year um, through Resolution 7620, and it was formed to study and evaluate methods to make improvements to the ordinance as it relates to development and the need for adequate infrastructure, particularly to public school facilities. Um, so generally, the APFO is intended to help the county balance development with the pressure that growth places on school capacity and to provide a predictable planning environment for the provision of adequate infrastructure. 
um, by requiring development projects to pass certain tests in order to be approved um, for development. However, in recent years, um, the county and BCPS have both felt the challenges um, with that growth and with the increase in stu of students in our schools in certain areas of the county as a result of increased development. So as part of our work, the task force reviewed the structure and efficacy of the APFOs in other Maryland jurisdictions. So we tried to see what is working well in other parts of the state. We reviewed the Baltimore County Master Plan, um, BCPS's own student enrollment and capacity data, census data, population projections, reports from the Maryland Department of Planning, the Maryland Sustainable Growth Commission, and we heard from experts on the subject. Um, we served through December 31st of last year, and our final report was issued on New Year's Eve, and that will be made available. It's been made available to the full board, as well as the county executive and county council, and I imagine that will be made available to the public if it hasn't already. Um, as Mr. Bazemore said, the minutes um, from our meetings and it, more information is available on the County Council's website under um, an APFO page. Um, the task force consisted of eight members um, supported by the County Auditor's Office. It was chaired by Liz Irwin, who did an amazing job as chair of the task force. Liz is the Baltimore County Deputy Auditor and Director of Fiscal Policy and Analysis. Also serving were Maureen Astorita, principal of Parkville High School, representing Case, Yara Sheikh, representing the League of Women Voters, Pete Gutwald, who um, did a yeoman's job, just a lot of heavy lifting, um, representing the Baltimore County Department of Planning, um, myself representing the board, Jane Lee, representing the PTA Council of Baltimore County, Lisa Norrington, who's a teacher at Patapsco High School, representing TABCO, and Rick Williams, principal at Development Design Consultants representing the Maryland Building Industry Association. So we really did have a phenomenal team who were very engaged um, and involved in the work. The task force began reviewing materials in early September. We convened six times via WebEx um, from September 9th through November 18th. We convened once via WebEx on December 16th for a public input hearing on the subject of school overcrowding. Um, we feel confident we delivered a package of sustainable, sensible, data-driven recommendations to the County Council for consideration in improving the APFO. Um, I'll summarize um, those recommendations. We recommend a shift in the timing of the APFO school test from the earliest point of the development approval process to the end of the development approval process. So a more current um, test to reflect more current conditions of um, school capacity um, based on current data. Um, we recommend elimination of exception opportunities, which are seldom used now. Um, those include the adjacent district exception because we aren't um, redistricting as frequently as the law may assume um, or is built into the law. They, those exceptions allow um, APFO approvals to be granted in overcrowded districts, so we recommend eliminating those. We recommend basing the overcrowding determination on a three-year projection of school enrollment that includes the projected enrollment yield associated with the proposed development, along with the pro pro projected yield from all vested and unvested developments with active APO, APFO approvals. So not only looking at the proposed development itself, but also looking at the pipeline of developments that are, are in that. So a much more comprehensive, complete look at developments affecting that district. Um, along Excuse with- me, Can I just jump in? Are, are you saying when you say looking at, at, at that, uh, that we are paying attention to maybe what an elementary looks like? Is that how you're looking at it or surrounding yes. growth? When there's a test to see if a district is overcrowded, we're recommending looking outwards or looking forward at the three year projections to see, OK, what's what's coming ahead? Not just at this point in time to say this may look OK now. What's it going to look like in three years from now? Are we looking at huge development in the next three years? And do we want to approve this pending development, knowing that there may be several others in the pipeline? Um, 
and that the projection that a particular school is projected to be overcrowded within the next three years. So in the immediate future. Thank you. Sure. I'm sorry. Question. Thank you. Um, we're looking at an eventual tightening of the overcrowding standard from the current 115% utilization rate to eventually 100% of state rated capacity. And the recommendations include a gradual um, shift to that 100%. Um, we also recommend a queuing process for developments awaiting APFO enrollment approval with a five year limitation on wait time, at which point an automatic APFO enrollment approval would be granted. Meaning at the end of five years, if the infrastructure is not there, then automatic approval would be granted. So in all fairness to developers who have waited that time, their approval would be granted at the end of that five year period. So again, balancing the rights of developers with the need to provide adequate infrastructure um, for the county. Lastly, um, of the major recommendations, we're recommending a three year expiration for APFO enrollment approvals upon which a development in an overcrowded district would need to re-enter a queue and potentially face a first or additional five year wait. So we recognize um, that this information or that approvals can change based on current circumstance and the need to revisit that. So we, we want to be smart about these tests for approvals. We want them to be based on um, projections for to have a more comprehensive approval process and we want them to be current. So the recommendations um, to summarize look at lowering the utilization rate to determine an overcrowded district um, to look and to look at additional data points um, for a more comprehensive um, approach to to that test. And those are the major recommendations. I did also want to mention in terms of sustainability of this plan, we are recommending the creation of an intergovernmental committee to be staffed by the Department of Planning composed of a county council designee, a superintendent's design, designee, a county department of planning representative, a county executive designee, and a board of education designee, which would meet, pu meet publicly and have APFO administration responsibilities, including accounting for the projected yields associated with all vested and unvested developments with active APFO approvals. So we, we don't want this to go into effect and sit on a shelf. We want this to be um, an, an active living, breathing process with stakeholders um, invested in it, reviewing how is it working and making recommendations for any changes as necessary. And again, the sustainability was really important to the task force. So Madam Chair, that concludes my okay. report. I'd be happy to take questions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, um, and, and certainly um, they had the work cut out for them. Um, and if you looked at the minutes to see what conversations happened to get to the report about which Ms. Hen just spoke, um, you'd see the variety of things. So I just wanna say I was pleased to see in the discussion that um, because these the, it, it was on the notes that I actually sent to my county um, council person and to somebody off in whatever land connected with the task force um, that we needed to take a look at um, building use and did we remember and I see that a couple of people talked about that that some schools uh, look like they are underpopulated but they really aren't because uh, for example, I have an elementary school that has a, a level um, 5 ED with little babies. And so by law, they have to maintain certain space. So it looks on paper like they're underpopulated, but they really aren't. And also considering in the report talking about um, uh, magnet programs, et cetera, um, I, I, living space versus type, because we also have some very large townhomes. And so you, the configuration in terms of processing numbers or, or what the projected number of incoming students might be would change. And also looking at um, age 
exempting age restrictions because if you have a senior development, that's a whole different ballgame because they're not going to your school. Um, so mm -hmm. there were a lot of things that were included and I'm glad to see. Now, you said going to 100%. Did I read that it's over seven years, five years? What? Uh, after a while, my years. Yeah. Do you have that? It is over. I would have to check that that time frame. I believe it's 5% every three years. So what does that come up? 10 years, nine years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, I'm going to ask you yeah, this Ellie. last question and I'll turn it over. I, I looked at all of the maps and so I looked at which schools have 115 or over and under. Um, what was the discussion about those that are under, but not a lot under, and are still overcrowded? What did that discussion look like or sound like? I'm sorry, can you repeat your question? Yes, we have, for example, between um, uh, Councilmanic District 2 and 4, because I just counted theirs, um, we or ours, we just, we have about Set, we have seven schools, I think nine schools. Seven of them are in District 2 and two are in four that are over, well over the 115%. But then we have other schools that are still overcrowded, but they are under 115%. And I think Mr. Baysmore goes back to our concern about Built to Learn. Um, was what kind of discussion happened, if any, about paying attention to those schools because they are subject those under to be over 115 in a minute? Sure. So we talked a lot about what overcrowding means and the definition and what our goals as a county should be and what does that look like um, in order to determine what the test criteria should be and what we want to strive for. So in, in other words, is an overcrowded school, what is in an over, overcrowded school? How do we want to define that? And is that, you know, we talked about relocatables significantly and we talked about what the goal, this is ambitious of, it's a target um, objective for us. We realize it's something that's gonna have to be achieved gradually um, if approved and goes into law. But we also didn't want to set the bar too low. These are high standards. Um, they're standards that have been implemented in other jurisdictions. And we felt we wanted high standards for the conditions and, and quality of our facilities. So that's what the discussion centered around, that we we want to, to strive for high quality facilities conducive to learning. And that's what the, the discussion centered around, more so than landing on a particular number with space to grow because what we didn't want to do was define it and then find ourselves you know immediately in the future above that threshold because that doesn't solve anything either so we wanted to leave ourselves room thank you other yeah. questions for miss han uh miss Tesher. yes miss miss Rowe. so um I read through all of the documents and I read through all of the um, recommendations and I've had frequent conversations with Ms. Hen because I knew that she was on the task force. And I would like to know from this committee if, if it's possible for this committee to deliberate on taking a position on the recommendations um to take a favorable position of the recommendations and forward it to the full board um that my my idea being that as a board we could support the recommendations of the task force but i i know that we would need to deliberate more on that i just wanted to know if there's an interest in doing that in the committee um miss scott Let's see, it's on the committee. 
Mr. Mahamza, will be any any thoughts on your part about what Ms. Um, Rowe just stated? As far as the recommendation from this committee to the full board? Yes. <clears throat> I guess my thought would be, I mean, Ms. Hen gave a presentation. If there's anything, I guess you would want to add to that. And then I, I don't see any problems with recommending it to the full board and presenting it. Thank you. So should I make a motion then, Ms. Pastor? Oh yeah, I guess my 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 I don't have a problem with it. Um, here's my hesitation. So I just need committee members to help me out of this box. Um, it, I it, to make that res recommendation. I'd like for us to be specific. Um, which means we should take a look at the document just like we did about the legislative priorities to look at a body and and then extract those things and then have that conversation and maybe but I know you want to do a recommendation to the full board and I guess my head is wrapped around having them included in us so you, well, you see where I, I'm going? I don't want to perseverate. Yeah, on somebody yeah. help me out of my box? I just don't like making making stuff without knowing what the stuff is. So, but I don't have a so, problem with the making a recommendation. Right. I just want to know what the details are. So I guess what my intention was, just like we had the legislative positions for the General Assembly, that we could it, once everyone is comfortable on the committee with the details of the APFO rec task force recommendations. Um, and I've read through them and I think once everyone's comfortable with them, there's not going to be anything. There's nothing really from the Board of Ed standpoint that's controversial. So and it only helps us plan for schools now and in the future. So I think that if we deliberated on this a little bit more or gave people time to read through it and ask Ms. Hen any further questions they have, then this committee could make part of our legislative platform that just like we voted on the things in the booklet, we could vote um, as a committee to recommend that the full board um, take a position supporting the recommendations of the APFO task force. OK, but obviously we have to review all those recommendations. I think we should we need to know what's in it. I agree. I don't think there's anything that's particularly controversial, but we could make recommendations to the board as long as we um, are asking the board after that we share them. I don't I guess I would since you use the legislative priorities, the format we used was to come up with ours, then we shared them with the board, ask for feedback, but they saw it, which is what you're asking, mm -hmm. our recommendations. No one really added anything to it, and then we were set to go, and we, we had that document, but what, there's a little twist here. Um, Ms. Scott, um, Mr. Mahomes, and Ms. Hen, what do you think? Ms. Ms. Rowe just gave us um, a roadmap, sort of. So right. can you just give me some thoughts quickly so I can get to Mr. Mahomes and we can move on? What's your <laughs> thinking? I'll start with you, Ms. Henson. Thank you. We're on the task force. I, I appreciate Ms. Rowe's suggestion. I think a recommendation from the committee to take a position supporting the APFO task force recommendations um, would be helpful to the full board and then to ask the full board to consider taking the same position as the board, um, resulting in potentially a letter from um, Chairwoman Scott to the County Council stating our position would be an appropriate um, deliverable or action from that um, motion. Ms. Scott, thank you, Ms. Hand. Ms. Scott. Thank you for that, Ms. Hand. And, um, 
I want to go back. I want to thank Ms. Hen for her work on the task force, for her volunteerism and her dedication and everything that she did to um, to uh, represent the school board on there. So I, I wanted to make sure that I that I said that. Um, uh, and and I agree. I think a uh, letter for me, um, but also bringing it to the full board and um, with the recommendation and um, giving our recommendation as the committee and then a letter to the county executive. Um, I'm, I'm going on. I basically agree with what Ms. Hen said. I think that's a wonderful suggestion. Thank you. Great, thank you. Do we want to just do a wide berth, I guess I'm saying, or do you want to break things down? If we break it down, that takes a little bit more time because you have to look at the document and say whatever. Or do you want to just, because Ms. Ms. Scott um, did ask because Ms. Rowe and I have asked about it being on the agenda and Ms. Scott um, a day or two ago um, did bring it up to me as well. So if, do you want to put it on the agenda that we would like the board to take a look at it and adopt it? I guess that's what I'm asking. How? What's the format? Because we have two choices. So, we do the same thing. So I'm going to go back to you, Ms. Hen. Thank you. I, I would like to add it to the agenda. And if Ms. Scott supports that, then she and I can add it to the full board agenda for action. OK, and I then we're you, I'm sorry. Ms. Ms. <laughs> Scott. I said I support it. I support okay. percent. All right. Thank so, you. So, so can Ms. Kester, we, yes, Ms. Rowe. So I guess um, what I would like to know is if all the committee members are comfortable with their familiarity with it and it's ready to go to the full board, um, I, I'd like to make a motion to forward to the full board with a favorable recommendation from the committee that the board take uh, a position supporting the recommendations of the APFO task force. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Uh, any discussion? Any more discussion? All right, thank you. So in light of the fact that we have both the chair and the vice chair Wait, here. We need to vote. Oh, look, I just went right on with the assumption. <laughs> Thanks, Ms. Rowe. OK, it's done. Let's move on. All right, um, Ms. Uh, Rosenberg, will you uh, do a roll call vote so I can stop trying to be in charge? Ms. Rosenberg, will you do a roll call vote, please? Hang on, I'm unmuting. Up. Oh, OK, <laughs> thank you. All right. Ms. Pastor? Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Ms. Scott? Yes. Ms. Rowe? Yes. And I'm not sure who. That's it. That's it okay. for the committee as we stand now. Thank okay. you. All right, then that will happen. So um, Ms. Hen can, thank you, Ms. Rosenberg. Can we count on you then to uh, do the verbiage for uh, the presentation? And then um, Ms. Scott and Ms. Hen, are we going to do committee? Where would you like this? Do you want this in committee report that we present? But you're going to, no, you're putting it on the agenda. You're putting it on the agenda. Okay, so you'll take care of it. And just a prize, please, um, the, the committee members, what you, with what you've come up and blah, 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 blah. Did I make any sense at all? I'm just putting it back in your lap because we don't have time to go back and forth yes. on it. Okay. So yes. will you take care of that, Ms. Hen? And yes. you and Ms. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And uh, Ms. <laughs> Scott and Ms. Hen, thank you for moving this um, forward for us. And I think we can get that done. Ms. Hester, yes, ma'am. I would just like to say that I have read in my time thousands and thousands of pages of task force documents. And I have never seen a better task force that more thoroughly covered an issue. There was not one thing I saw in there that 
I had thought of that we had discussed in this committee that they did not fully cover. And there were massive amounts of things they covered that I was not even aware of. And so I just wanted to put that out there that um, Liz Irwin is the chair of the committee and all the members of the committee. And Ms. Hen made sure, Vice Chair Hen made sure that they did not miss a beat on what this committee talked about when we asked the county council to look into this in the first place. And so the, as far as governmental work goes, that task force was well beyond the call of duty. And thank you. And that might be why, as Mr. Baysmore said, they did a lot in a short period of time. So thank you. And again, thank you, Ms. Han. Thank you, Ms. Um, Ms. Fester. With that being said, Mr. Mahomza, um, I know you have a presentation, not a presentation, but some things you'd like to share with us. And we are over time only because we, we generally are able to keep within an hour. So we really aren't, aren't over time, but we're going to act like we are. So Mr. Mahomza. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair. And I'm going to just uh, keep my comments very short. Um, first of all, I just want to wish our community um, members a happy TVCPS day. And uh, thank you all for all the work you're doing, uh, that staff, teachers, and our families. Um, and I'm honored to uh, speak at this committee. It's my first time speaking at this committee. Um, I look forward to working uh, uh, with this committee uh, in the coming weeks and seeing the great work that uh, we all are going to get to do. Um, this year, with all that's going on, um, students have been reaching out about um, what they can do uh, mm -hmm. in terms of affecting um, change, not only at the school board level, but in our local legislatures. Um, I know Ms. Pastor has talked about how um, students have been submitting um, uh, proposed uh, policy proposals, bills that they would like to see either implemented in our school uh, system or on a county level and had to receive similar um, emails. So uh, uh, students in general have been energized about uh, uh, the legislative making process. Uh, and so I guess uh, I felt uh, this year uh, was a good time um, to join this committee see what works done at, at our local government systems and really uh, bring uh, the student voice uh, to uh, to this uh, decision making. Um, and so the reason I'm speaking here today, uh, uh, most importantly, is uh, to uh, make sure uh, this committee is aware that I hope to uh, continue uh, some of the uh, legislation that uh, this, my predecessor, the previous mob, uh, submitted uh, to the Maryland General Assembly uh, last year. Uh, I know that it didn't go through committee last year, and those uh, three bills were um, increasing the SMOB uh, uh, scholarship, um, uh, the election of the student member, and also uh, the uh, student members uh, voting on the operating budget. And um, Last year, those three bills were submitted to the uh, uh, General Assembly. Uh, the two passed the election and the stipend. Um, the the vote on the operating budget did pass, I believe, the General Assembly, but didn't get to go to, uh, to the Senate. So I, I would uh, I believe with from talking to uh, the Mabe um, uh, the uh, the Mabe official who re uh, who works with the leg uh, Maryland Legislature earlier on. Uh, uh, in, in my term, he said that we would have to restart uh, the process um, all over uh, to square one. So uh, with that news, I, I really wanted this committee to get involved, um, voice um, also hear uh, you guys, your guys' opinions uh, uh, on this matter because it's really important and I hope to have the support of this committee uh, in those endeavors. Other than that, I uh, have uh, no other comments. Cheryl, I believe you're muted, Madam Chair. I believe you're muted. All right, thank you. He did talk to me some time ago about those bills, and I really appreciate the fact that he saw those actions as things that um, were an extension, not just of what he does, but that 
to really make it work that he wanted to bring it to this committee first so we can be connected. He is ours and it, it just makes good sense that even though he's ours in terms of the board, he's representing the students, but that we have a connection in offering him support and, and have a connection in his growth. So I want to thank you, Mr. Mahumza, for seeing that big picture and bringing these ideas to us. Anyone have any comments, thoughts um, about what Mr. Mahomza just said? Uh, Ms. Pester. Yes, Ms. Rupp. So um, I, I followed those bills last time and the only one that I saw any um, real legitimate community arguments to is the student member voting over the budget. And the discussion that I saw in the community on that is the idea that the student member is chosen by children to represent the students who are children. And the budget is taxpayer money and the students are not taxpayers. So I can see an obstacle to that bill being that it's not appropriate to give children oversight over taxpayer money. And I have to say from the standpoint of governmental structures, that's a very compelling argument and one that I think mm -hmm. I agree with. Thank you, Ms. Rowe. Anyone else have any comments to Mr. Mahomza or Mr. Mahomza, do you wanna to respond to that? Um, any more discussion on what he has given us for this evening. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, respond to that comment. And I appreciate uh, uh, your comment, uh, Mr. Ryan. I think uh, that is uh, why I felt it was important for, to include this committee in this conversation um, to really address those concerns. Um, this vote on, on the budget is n nothing new, nothing radical. Um, in fact, there's two counties already who have already had this uh, um, these voting rights in particular um, Anne Arundel County had not only the vote, uh, vote on the budget but has full voting rights so anything the board votes on um, uh, they vote on um, they have it all any all student members who have been elected have been um, uh, intelligent they have been uh, 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 representing the students uh, concerns um, diligently um, uh, they haven't proposed anything that is radical. They have read on all documents that have been provided to them. I, I know I read everything that is being provided to me. Um, so it's not like it, we're allowing a person to have unlimited unlimited power. Of course, the board has a checks and balances uh, system where there's 12 members. No one member can really affect much. Uh, they would really, If they wanted to make much change, they would have to uh, garner the support of all 12 board members. Um, so if we really care about the voice of students, uh, concerns of students, uh, we really need to um, have that one person who uh, is in that schoolhouse. Um, he's uh, seeing the effects uh, that students, uh, that the decisions of the board are having on students. I'm gonna, um, last, I, I believe it was year, two years ago, last year, um, the board made a decision uh, that did affect schools like mine. Um, and that was uh, the vote initially to, um, remove uh, the Navion system. I I personally use that system with our librarian um, to do research. Obviously, I go to Dundalk, it's a more low, low income schools. So th the decision made by the board did affect my community. Uh, students were hurt in that uh, decision made by the board. So who else? Uh, I know that it took uh, eventually, I, I believe the board um, changed um, that uh, vote, but it took weeks. Uh, this could have been averted by having that student um, speak on those uh, concerns, speak on how it's going to affect those students, uh, because they are going to be in that schoolhouse and they do hear from students directly. So I appreciate that concern. I hope that cleared it out a little bit. Mr. Mahamza, I just want to clarify, I am in no way suggesting that students are intellectually incapable of making the decision. I'm simply pointing out that 
the tradition in this country typically is that children don't make decisions on taxpayer money. Now, if the voters of Maryland have no objection to the elected officials in the General Assembly allowing you to make that decision or allowing a student member to make that decision, um, that's entirely up to them. But I think I'm not going to take a position one way or the other on it when it comes to this board. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah, yeah, and I wasn't, I, and I wasn't insinuating that you're, uh, you're making that statement. I was just saying, um, student members, uh, them, in the, uh, each student member just works hard, reads on the material that's being provided. So I wasn't making any uh, statement, like, uh, assuming anything that you made. Thank you. Thank you. To both of you, thank you, uh, Mr. Mahumza, for your presentation. Uh, Ms. Rowe, for your comments on that particular item. Um, Ms. Scott, Ms. Hen, uh, Mr. Baysmore, anything else to Mr. Mahumza or anything for the good of the order before I take on a motion to. Um, okay, this is Ms. Scott. Ms. Scott. Ah, yes, ah. thank you. Um, I would I would like to say that um, I appreciate and respect the student voice. I think it's important to hear from our young people. They're the future, and I think that it's important. I'd love to hear um, young people who are standing up for themselves and taking a position on something. Uh, re like um, Mr. Mahomsa said, reading the information, coming to the meetings, coming prepared, and actually being aware of what's going on, their impact in the world and their impact on this board, I think is important. So I would not be so quick to dismiss Mr. Mahomsa or any of the smobs or their positions. I would like to hear more about um, what they have to say, and I look forward with great interest to hear how this will progress and how it will move forward. So, Mr. Mahomes, I thank you for standing up for yourself, for your um, your classmates, your students. Because you are a student, that does not mean that your voice is any less important. And you're speaking for the voiceless, and you are the voice of the future. And I. I, I really appreciate everything that you and all the SMOBs do, and I look forward to um, what you will bring to this committee and what you all will do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Ms. Ms. Scott. Um, and for Madam, those, Ms. those Pastor, comments. Yes. Uh, and, I, I, and I think I, I wanted to make a quick uh, clarification. I, I mentioned yes. uh, the database that was brought in. Um, by the board, I, I I think I said not the answer. I meant to say noodle tools. I don't know if I um, switched the two. Sorry. Yeah, you did. <laughs> so, uh, I meant to say noodle tools. Yeah. Thank you. And I I I love um, piggybacking on what was just said. I just love that our students are having uh, this kind of dialogue and what it does spur on are those conversations that they do have with their parents um, who give them um, some things about which to think and that the young people give their parents some thoughts because they're the ones who actually use much of what we are are the recipients of much of what happens in our, um, our, our budgets. And it's always supposed to come back to how is this going to support and help our children? So I'm looking forward to hearing more. So Mr. McCombsa, OK, say that four times. Um, as you join this committee and you bring us slices of these things as they are moving forward, you and Mr. Baysmore will be keeping an eye on how all of these move forward and you will be addressing them in committee. So thank you very much and thank you everyone for your comments um, because it not only gives us food for thought, but it also gives him food for thought, things that he can take back and use. Anything else for the good of the order? Uh, Ma Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Baysmore. I uh, just wanted to um, say um, congratulations to uh, Chairwoman Makita Scott. Um, this is the first time I've, you know, have been on a Zoom and been able to speak with her. 
And so I just want to um, congratulate you on 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 the on the chairmanship and and your leadership and what you what you're doing. And also Miss uh, Julie Hen, um, who is vice chair. So I just wanted to publicly thank them for their leadership uh, on the board and thank Miss Kathleen Causey for her service. I think she is on the call as well, and she did an excellent job as as chair and uh, looking forward to working with everyone um, and and especially uh, uh, Mr. Mahamza um, being a student, um, the student voice and my mind and heart is the most important voice um, because that essentially that's who we're working for. All of us um, is, is for the children. So um, I had a great working relationship with uh, Omar Rashid, who was an excellent uh, student uh, member representing the students, and I look forward to working with you, Mr. Mahamza. Um, this is a good board here with Lily Rowe and and everyone that's on this uh, committee. And so when you uh, bring this to the committee to deliberate uh, that legislation, um, then um, i like to talk to you about how to get a sponsor, a bill sponsor. Last year we had Pat Young, the chair of the legislative committee, um, sponsor the bills. Uh, so there's a process in place. And when you and I have time to speak, I uh, just want to make you aware of the process so that so that when the committee, um, you know, approves of certain bills, you'll know the, the next steps on how to make that come to fruition. Uh, so thank you. I just wanted to, um, you know, thank everybody. I thought this think that this was a great way to get started. It's going to be a lot as different in the legislature this year because of COVID and all the safety concerns. Uh, but I think we're well represented and we'll be able to do a, do an excellent job uh, of this session. So thank you, everyone. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I thank you. And we see that as our work grows, our time, we're now like the other committees in time. Our time is is up. We will now schedule ourselves, Mr. Baysmore and Ms. Rosenberg, because we are doing some significant work and making sure that our voices are heard, inclusive of our student member. So thank you. I'd like a motion to adjourn, please. Second Hen. All right, thank you, um, Ms. Rowe and Ms. Hen. Everyone have a great evening and be safe as you turn off your computers. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Thank you Chair. You as well. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Baseboard. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Madam Chair.